Hey guys, this is Andrew Wright with another re 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 Review the Right Thing, and we're going to be talking about some more music today. First up is U.S. Girls, Heavy Light, from Toronto-based singer-songwriter Megan Ramey. It's her seventh studio album, and the production on this album really mixes elements of pop and R&B. At times it really reminds me of Kate Bush, which for some reason is not an influence of hers, surprisingly. Her early material, she cites the early Riot Girl scene as more of her influence. The album features some really great orchestration. The production really feels bigger than it really is. It's very minimalist, and yet it moves, has very Latin-inspired production, and also features some Spanish-speaking parts. State House is one of the bigger sounding songs with a booming bass drum and some Christmas bells. Soon on, the song begins to grow into something more nightmarish. The rest of the album uses traditional elements of varying popular musics. Lyrically, topics include corporate greed, loss or guilt from feeling loss or not feeling loss, human existence, personal relationship with her mother, and event timelines used as a backdrop to express where she was at during that time period. Overall, I feel pretty good about the album. It's creative and well-written, but I wish the spoken interludes were saved until the very end. They're really only worth one listen, and State House feels like an unfinished track clocking in at just under two minutes. Still offers nine other tracks that are worth diving into, and I really do recommend this album. I would give it a solid 7 out of 10. Next up, the new album from The Weeknd, Canadian singer Abel Tesfaye brings out his fourth album after a handful of mixtapes and an EP. Production is similar to previous work with fogged out, slow tempo beats with varying tempo changes. Some songs get a little bit more hard hitting and have various use of synthesizers to help give it that added washed texture. Artist to Love tosses some additional snares and glitches midway that really mix it up. Snow Child features more of that slowed down kind of hip hop beat that flows in between futuristic R&B textures. Faith has a hard-hitting club-like dance vibe, while Blinding Light and In Your Eyes feature more 80s pop-inspired feel with grand synthesizer use, In Your Eyes being more of that disco-fueled vibe. The rest of the album feels pretty much like the rest of his back catalog. Lyrically similar themes from his struggles with drugs and anxiety, relationship issues and commitment issues. I think he's a good songwriter and has really well-written self-reflective songs. If you were already a fan, you're probably going to enjoy this record. However, if you weren't a fan to begin with, this record doesn't offer anything new or additional that's going to make it change your mind. He doesn't offer anything new or try to challenge the listener at all, but continues to deliver solid R&B tracks that sound like a drug trip. Another solid addition to his catalog, and I would give it a 7 out of 10. And last but not least, Childish Gambino's 31520, the fourth studio album from rapper-singer Donald Glover, released after a handful of mixtapes and a few EPs. Although this record was released Released on 31520 as a Donald Glover presents on his website. It was pulled about 12 hours later and then not released until a few days ago. Production still seems pretty similar to the direction that he was going on Awaken My Love. Algorithm has more of the falsettos showcased on Awaken but then also has a futuristic kind of spoken word rap vibe going on to it. 1238 is one of the more funky tracks on the album similar to something that would sound off of Awaken My Love. 2419 is a very raw, stripped-back track that slowly builds into something a little bit bigger as the song progresses. 3222 features some very heavy electronic influence with some very futuristic auto-tuned vocals. Lyrically, Donald Glover tackles themes of human existence and our repetitive nature, his relationship with his significant other, our violent society, and growing up, and those changes that you go through while growing up. If you're expecting Awaken My Love Part 2, you're not going to get it here, but this album does showcase more of Donald's talent and creativeness, and further showcases that he's a great artist at what he's doing. Overall, I would give this album an 8 out of 10. I don't think it's as great as Awaken My Love. To me, that album was pretty much near perfect, but this is a great follow-up. I'm eager to hear more of Childish Gambino's output in the future. In the end, did you enjoy either record, or did you wish that they would have delivered a little bit something different? Uh, U.S. Girls' album sounded very much like her last record. She's very much going in that direction of more of an experimental art-pop sound. And Weekend basically is delivering the same album that he's been delivering over the last several releases. Neither of which are bad things, but if you hope that they would do something different and try to expand on that sound, do you wish these albums would have been something else? Let me know in the comments, and if you like this, click subscribe to view more Review the Right Thing. Thanks for watching.